coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. You go to the doctor recognizing that Jehovah Rapha, Jesus Christ, is your physician. He is your healer and that he will work with the doctor. And you go with your discerner. You go with your faith. So that when the doctor says some things and you don't agree with it, you say, well, Ignite the moment. the way God operates with you, child of God. You can seize moments, you can ignore them, or you can ignite them. You will be there praying and praying and praying and you'll get frustrated because you have not given God something to work with. He confirms the word, he multiplies the seed. So, signed, sealed, delivered, placed at your doorstep. It's now for you to ask, what is that word? What is that action? Life is made up of moments. This is one moment. Another moment is coming, another moment. When you misplace your priorities at the right time, you put your priorities at the wrong time, what happens is that you lose a moment. He'll either take you out of the farming, or while take the farming out, out of you, of you yeah. or keep that fire of your provision going. God's miracles in your life don't run dry. The mm. blessing mm. is in overflow. Mm. If I put it this way, God doesn't know how to do blessing any other, other way. way. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. Today's episode of Fresh Dew is very special because we're still going on with our message series, Seizing the Moment, and this is part nine. We all know Pastor Shalaki Ole by now. We've been having a wonderful time, yes. wonderful time very. on this message series, Seizing the Moment, and I hope you've been seizing some moments in your life. Glory be to God. So very quick review. We said season means to take hold of suddenly and forcibly take forcible possession of. A moment means a point of time, a time so short that it may be considered as a point, a very short time, an infinitesimal change in a varying quantity, a stage or a turning point. Quickly, we looked at six points, six, that's a lot so far. The first was a moment can be ignored or ignited. Two, when you take a decision, to set a moment of fire on fire, you often have no clue how big a fire you just started. Three, sometimes you could be sitting on the opportunity of a lifetime, but all it takes is a trigger in a moment and your eyes open to it. Four, extraordinary steps ignite divine moments and cause extraordinary fires, but ordinary steps allow moments to be ignored. Five, the right mindset will trigger steps of faith that may look meaningless, but often set up a chain reaction of blessings that will change your life forever. Yeah. And six, extraordinary steps of faith mm. reveal principles that will always be useful for the rest of your life. Seven, where we start from today. When you choose, and this is awesome, when you choose to ignite a divine moment, the natural, natural gives way to the, to the supernatural. Glory be to God. Amen. When you choose, you make the choice not to ignore, but to ignite, like we've been learning, a divine moment. The natural gives way to the supernatural. What is natural? Pertaining to the established order of things. Right. Supernatural, divine, not natural, beyond natural, in layman's terms, out of this world. Yeah. Not natural. So not according to the established order, order of, of things. things. So when you, that means you can trigger the change from the natural to the supernatural. You can decide if a situation operates in the natural realm or the supernatural realm. And what better example do we have than that of Jesus? Yeah. We're going to see how Jesus ignited a moment and turned something natural into something supernatural. We have several portions of scripture. Same story in Mark and Matthew, we're going to read Mark eleven twelve. Now the next day, when they had come out of Bethany, he was hungry, Jesus was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, 
he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. Mm. 20. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God and our life principles of faith come up here. 23. For assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Matthew 21, 19. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves and said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately, the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled saying, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, as sure did I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. Now, whatever version we look at, Mark or Matthew, we see that the natural gave way to the supernatural. Whether it happened you know, instantly or not, it's not the issue right now. It happened that the natural gave way to the supernatural. So the first thing we need to see here is that there are natural laws and these natural laws are powerful. Right. They are natural laws mm -hmm. and they're powerful. And to understand this, we need to understand how the fig tree produces. It actually produces two times in the year, two times, two seasons. And the first time the fig tree produces, it comes out with early green immature figs. And when those early green immature figs come out, leaves come out. So when you see leaves on the fig tree, there's a very high likelihood that they are the green immature figs. They may be immature, but you can eat them. Edible. If, you're, if you're hungry, they're yeah. edible. If you're really hungry, like Jesus was. So Jesus was led by these natural, powerful laws. That's how powerful they were. They led Jesus in his hunger to the tree. Why? He saw the leaves and expected the leaves to be telling him that there were green immature figs on the, on the tree. That's why it says it was not yet the season for figs. Because after that first season of green, immature figs and leaves, then the full, ripe, mature figs. But Jesus wasn't waiting for the full, ripe, mature figs. He was hungry. And he saw the leaves. And the leaves told him naturally that he was going to get green, immature figs. And he didn't see them. And that's how powerful natural laws are. Sometimes we ignore the power in natural laws. They do exist. And the truth, the truth is that many times natural laws speak to us and direct our actions and direct our steps. And that's how powerful they are. You could get married and the natural laws tell you quite ex expectedly. And some people are under pressure in, the, in their marriages. Oh, thank God for today's wedding. In nine months' time, we'll be back for a baby dedication. How whether, do you know? Whether or not the couple wants people want them. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't want kids immediately. Right. We deliberately waited almost three years sure. to having our first child. Right. People were making prayers for us. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're blocking things out. <laughs> so sometimes natural laws tell you this and this is it. And that's how powerful they are. Or you go to school and you come out with the first class and natural laws tell you you get a good job like that. There are first class graduates who are unemployed. And, you know, the natural laws may have told you these things. Social laws, they're all natural laws. Educational laws, economic laws, they are powerful laws and they build your expectations. That's the real issue here, that natural laws are very, very powerful. But let's look at what happened with Jesus. As powerful as these natural laws were, they didn't have the fix yeah. they promised him. Yeah. That's our next statement. So not just that natural laws are powerful. I'm making three statements, by the way. The second one is this, that the natural law could prove to be a hypocrite. Wow, a pretender. A pretender. So a natural law, as powerful, it sets you up 
a teaser, a bait, gets your expectations high, whets your appetite, does you long throat. <laughs> That's Nigerian English. Does you long throat. In Igbo, you say, ekberi tokom, tokom, tokom. Makes your, you makes you salivate. salivate yeah. And you're saying, oh, I'm expecting this. Your expectation is purely natural. And it's okay, because they're powerful. But these same natural laws can be very hypocritical. And who's a hypocrite? One who pretends to be what one is not. One who professes to have what one does not have. Wow. Do you know as believers we meet this all the time? Certainly. Natural laws professing to deliver what they can deliver. Mm. And when they hit a barrier, it shows that they are natural. So natural laws, child of God, can be hypocritical. And that fig tree was hypocrite. And that was what got Jesus upset, as it were. He says, oh, no man is going to eat any fruit from you anymore. You lied to me. You showed me, you showed me these leaves, and I was hungry. <laughs> and I was and you hungry. You didn't deliver on your promise. You didn't promise. deliver on your yeah. promise. Right. How many natural laws have failed you, child mm. of God? Thank you, Jesus. How many expectations have been dashed? Your uncle promised you a scholarship. And the day you came for the check, the security man didn't let you in. Your mother promised you something, and the day you came up to her, she cursed you out. Your husband said he'll do this for you. And when the times came to stand up and do exactly what he said, he denied it completely. Your degree told you and guaranteed you some things. Your boss promised you a promotion. It's been three years now. Your body told you you were gonna have a child right after marriage. It's been 10 years now. Natural laws can prove to be hypocritical. Natural laws can promise you things they do not have the ability that is to deliver. That is why we can't put our trust in chariots hmm. and in men. Amen. We've got to keep our focus on something greater. That means there must be something greater than natural laws. Because when you respect natural laws, we should be respected sometimes because they're powerful. When they do now show themselves up to be hypocrites, and what do you do? What do you do? What well, do you do? Is that the end of the road? No, that's not the end. It brings us to the third statement. When a natural law proves to be a hypocrite, you can ignite a moment and change the picture so that the supernatural Back takes to igniting over. again. Back to igniting. That's what we're talking about. One more time. When a natural law proves to be a hypocrite, you can ignite a moment and change the picture so that the supernatural takes over and this is where you you have a joker as a child of god this is where you have an ace this is where you have an ace and that joker is the law of supernatural faith when the natural proves to be a hypocrite it's not over when that situation lies to you you went to school you made a degree you got married no children or you got married and you expected your family to go you married from a particular family and therefore you expected you know certain things based on that when that situation proves to be a hypocrite the, that's not the end of the story. You can step in and ignite a moment by the supernatural take charge law. Of the situation. Of, you can take charge of the situation, just like what Jesus Christ. You see, the example of a game of cards is very lovely because you see, the child of God has a joker. It's I don't know too much about cards, but when you're playing a card, you know, imagine you have an ace or a joker. You know, for the for if two people are playing, they both have a stack of cards. The, the, the believer can be likened to the one who has an ace or a joker. Mm. The unbeliever is likened to the one who just has his own stack of deck of cards with him. Now, when the unbeliever comes to the end of the road, when so the when, the when the robber hits the road, when the natural laws prove to be a hypocrite for the, un for the unbeliever, he, he's at the end of his, uh, his road. He's done, finished, capiche. But when a child of God when the natural laws produce, uh, 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 become hypocritical to the child of God, he hasn't come to the end of the road. He <laughs> has a joker in his pack. God has, thank you, Lord. God, the way God dealt to every man the measure of faith. He dealt God to you a to joker, a joker in your in de pack. <laughs> in dealing with you the measure of faith, he dealt with you a joker he card. Sneaked a joker he sneaked it, he put glory snuck it in there. To glory to God. And when that hypocritical and situation. That's called the blessing advantage. Glory to God. That's what it is. That's what it is. The favor of God. Yeah. The goodness of God. Yeah. Which can be activated by that card of faith. You just bring it and you slam it, slam on the dog and 
finish work, Barisha. It's a bank card. <laughs> <laughs> you just finish it and it is done. That's the supernatural law of faith. So even when you are looking at a natural law, you should be standing on the foundation of the supernatural law. Mm -hmm. Like you often say, say that again. When, even when you are looking at a natural law, you should be standing on the foundation of the supernatural, remembering that natural laws are... Good it could be hypocritical. Mm -hmm. I mean, you often say this in one of your classic teachings, uh, what divine healing is not. And one of the things that changed my life in that message is, when you go to see the doctor, go with your faith. A lot of people think divine healing is an either or mm -hmm. proposition. Mm -hmm. If I am seeing a doctor, then my faith is on pack, mm -hmm. is on neutral, is in reverse. Or even many Christians forget faith. They then put faith in the doctor. Mm -hmm. Well, the natural law says that if you take a medication, it should help your body. But we all know that that, that is one natural law that proves to be a hypocrite. Side so, ma uh, <laughs> so many times. So you don't go to the doc you go to the doctor recognizing that Jehovah Rapha, Jesus Christ, is your physician. He is your healer. And that he will work with the doctor. And you go with your discerner. You go with your faith. So that when the doctor says some things and you don't agree with it, you say, well, you ignite the moment. You ignite the moment. Say, doctor, put thank out you for joker. My joker is here. I'm going to use my faith. And you don't put your faith on pack. You make use of it. Notice what Jesus Christ did here in verse 14. It says, in response, Jesus said to it, in response. You see, there is nothing in nature that does not have ears. If this situation, this was, and doesn't have mouth, and doesn't have, mouth have a mouth, this situation, if the scripture says in response, that means the fig tree spoke to Jesus. The fig tree there is symbolic because Jesus went on to talk about mountains and that, speaking to mountains. Is that what you're saying? Call and respond. Thank you. Hello, Shola. Respond. Hello, Pastor Ketch. Hello, Pastor Shola. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you doing? This is a very lovely shoot, isn't it? It is. Very powerful <laughs> and anointed. <laughs> What's happening? You're responding. Exactly. That means you're hearing me say exactly. something. Exactly. In fact, the Greek word for response here carries the idea of replying when something is said to you. That's very interesting. That means in any circumstances, they speak to us. But thank you, Lord. The conversation is not over because there is, an, there is a response it's from you. It's not one-sided. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians either corroborate what that circumstance said, they say what the circumstance has said to them, or they keep silent. And in the realm of the spirit, you can't afford to be, be quiet. If you are neutral, if the silence is acquiescence to what the situation has said. But Jesus, this is powerful Jesus, the moment the situation spoke to it, in response, it spoke. So if he can speak to you, then he can hear you. If your body can tell you when those symptoms are raging, that you are going to die prematurely, your then, body can hear you then he can hear you say, with long life he will satisfy me, mm -hmm. he will show me his salvation, mm -hmm. I will come to my grave, my grave will not come to me, mm -hmm. I will come to it in a full old age, like mm -hmm. a shock of course, mm -hmm. corn ripens in its season. So when you're faced with those situations, what do you do? Speak out and ignite. Speak in response. Another thing you could do is to sow a seed and ignite the moment. We've seen that several here about that woman who took that step, gave to the prophet of God, sow a seed, expect because God multiplies the seed sown. If you expect things to happen and you've not given God something to work with, again, back to the story we looked at in the last number of episodes, that was what the prophet was getting the woman to do, to get her involved in the miracle process. God is not a magician. Mm -mm. Anything he by zero is what? Zero. No, a million by zero is zero. So God is God is almighty. God, you are so powerful. God, you can do all things. All things are possible with God and all things are possible with him who believes. In fact, it says with God, with, that is in conjunction with God. Yeah. So you have to partner, you have to parley, you have to party so with God. God says, give me something give to me multiply. Some, thank you. My multiplying power is here. Thank, uh, yeah. My grace is here. Right. But give me something to multiply. <laughs> give me one apple. Right. And I'll give you a basket of fruits. Praise God. But don't tell me you're hungry, you want a basket of fruits. Give me an apple. Right. Then I multiply Find it. That. Kaboom, yeah, boom, right. boom. <laughs> and it becomes a basket of yeah. fruits. But you must give God something, something to multiply. To walk. And then that's, that's what ignites a moment. Take a step of faith. Step out of the boat. Do what Jesus said to do. Respond. Jesus responded. When natural situations fail you, you have to key into the supernatural law 
that is which is the law of faith and that and the natural will bow and give way to the supernatural jesus was saying to this tree you know what you missed your natural opportunity to feed me and your hypocrisy will be your downfall no, no. and you'll get you will you you'll not get the glory in this situation and because of this you'll not be able to feed any other person no. and jesus <laughs> jesus came in <laughs> with the higher law of supernatural faith which is the famous matthew 11 22 24 have faith in god or more literally have the faith of god and it shows us that faith believes in the heart and you speak out what you have so many christians who are silent our slogan should become silent no more it sound like that oh okay <laughs> it sound like that in my book. yeah, yeah. Silent, silent no more declare what god has said that's the way you trigger the moment if you keep quiet you are acquiescing with the situation you're giving the situation the power and the right to rule over you but when you open your mouth in response to it and that means if you're going to respond to you you must know what to say you must be filled with the word of god because that's the way you 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 activate it you, what you're saying must be founded upon a promise upon a provision that god has made for you in his word Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Silent no more. Silent no more. Silent no more. You move from the established order of things to your divine order of things. You pull out our joker. You've dealt with us the joker and the ace. You pull it out of the bag. Amen. And we use our faith. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. Seizing the moment. This was an amazing episode we right. just did. Wow, that was awesome, awesome teaching. Amen. You know, in the course of this teaching, we mentioned silent no more. And, you know, we just picked up on this. Right. This is my book, Dancing with Your Spirit. And in this book, there is a psalm titled Silent No More. This is a book of 40 psalms, and I'm sure you have your copy by now. And I want to just share this psalm with you under the same grace that anointing we just ministered with. And I believe it will drive home what we've just learned that we cannot afford to be silent when natural laws begin to prove themselves to be hypocrites in our lives. So let's go on and read this psalm. Silent no more. Silent no more. No longer will I stop by the shore. Silent no more. Crashing waves. Breaking limits. Clearing boundaries. Words spilling out from the abundance within from depths unseen, words of life, waves of destiny. Silent no more, the waters are flowing, the force is great, it hits the shore and reaches beyond. Silent no more, now I am praying, declaring, confessing, establishing, enforcing, praising, worshipping. I am silent. I am silent no more. I am silent no more. The waves go far beyond the shore. Now I have an overflow of life, an overflow of healing, an overflow of provision, an overflow of protection, an overflow of my destiny an overflow for eternity. Why would I be silent anymore? Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Dancing with your spirit. A book by Pastor Nkechi Ene. Visit freshdew.tv or call 0700 Get Media to place your order today. Also available at bookshops nationwide. You have so many questions about your life and life in general. Why, when, how, what, who, and the list goes on. Brother, Jesus is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. He loves you too much to leave you this way. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Will you make a decision for a change today? To surrender your life to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God? If you want to do that, 
Say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart, according to Romans 10, 8 to 13, and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. We can help you grow in your new faith so that what has just happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. Please call us at 0700 fresh to you or email us at saved at fresh to you.tv and we'll be here for you. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234-700-3737-4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nketi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nketi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. You can now watch Fresh Dew with Pastor Nkechi Ene every day on My Faith TV from Monday to Friday by 9.30 p.m. West African time or 10.30 p.m. Central African time from the 1st of July, 2019. Child of God, seek to know the word of God. Seek to get a revelation for yourself. Find out more on our website, freshdew.tv. Fresh Dew giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life.